to say to him show me your glory and he saw his glory if you will say show me your glory you too will see his glory the bible says seek and you will do what you will find you hear me the time of our captivity has expired do you know that your redeemer lives? i decree from today nobody will shine with your star You will expand. Receive power to expand. Nobody will shine with your destiny. Nobody will shine with your glory. In the name of Jesus. Word of life. Building nations. Restoring lives. Changing the world with the word of God. says the light shines in darkness. Darkness cannot stop it. This hour we ask, precious Father, that the light of your word shine in our hearts. Let the wisdom that comes from your word be revealed to us. Flesh counts nothing. It is the spirit that gives light. Jesus said, the word I've spoken to you, they are life and they are spirit. Lord, this moment we ask that the spirit behind the letters of the scriptures shall be revealed to us. I am nothing. You are nothing. It is not about me. It is about your glory. Do in our means what no other man can do. Let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me start by appreciating God for this great honor and privilege given to me by the Bessie Son, Father. Right Reverend Professor Jaino Apala OOM Bishop of Diocese of Nehu. I must also say thank you to the chaplain, Council of Night, Venerable BC OKK, for finding me worthy, within the Council of Night, and also to say thank you to my own parishioner and the president of the Council of Knights, Sir Ezekiel Okeke. I salute the gallant knights and the ladies of the church. It is my prayer that the time we are going to spend together in God's presence in this retreat shall be what will benefit us for the rest of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, we are going to be brief because this is a service. Then after now, in the subsequent teachings, we will be elaborate the more. I am happy and grateful that I am standing before you. I bless God for that. Praise the Lord. We are looking at the general team in view of all these peace still. In view of all these peace still. The 
there is a need for peace to be still because there is a storm. It is because of the storm that the need for peace to be still arose. Let's go to our test. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I will begin to read again at verse 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea be him? Praise God. For the purpose of my time, sake of my time, I want to narrow, very, very narrow this session I want to look at the benefits, the need for the storm. The need for the storm. It's like, it's not what somebody will want to hear. How can you say I have need for storm? How can you say there is benefit in the storm? The storms of life are those situations you don't want, but they must come. The storms of life are those things you didn't pray for. They are those things that troubles you. Those things that reminds you, you are still a man. You know, the major thing storm does in our lives is that the storms reminds us that you are still a human being. No matter the height you have come to. When I was in Ascension, I preached a sermon, seven spiritual laws. And number one spiritual law I mentioned to them was, he is God and you are not. It is the storms of life that reminds us that he is God and you are there are those terrible situations. There can be storms in somebody's business. There can be storms in marriages. There can be storms in careers. There can be storms in destiny. There can, storms can tear apart what somebody has built over the years. Businesses somebody has labored over the years for. The storms of life can tear it and bring it to nothing. Yet, this morning I am talking about the need those storms. I want to begin to do a little exegesis on this particular test. If you have followed this test critically, you will notice that when Jesus, let me quickly say this before I forget it. No matter the storm you see in your life, remember it was Jesus that said to them, let us cross over to the other side. 
It was Jesus' instruction. And he who said, I want us to cross over to the other side. No matter the storms, he will get you to that side. But in between where you are and where God is taking you to, there is possibility there will be storms. Okay? Jesus said to them, Ah, we have stayed long here. Let us now go to the other side. Let us cross. Get a boat. Let's cross to the other side. It was Jesus' initiative. It was his instruction. They were not in the midst of the storm as a result of disobedience. In fact, they were in the storm as a result of obedience to his instruction. And I quickly added, in between where you are, and wherever God is taking you to, there is a possibility you will meet storms. Alright? So, when Jesus said to them, let us cross to the other side of the sea. Now, they chose a boat. The first benefit I noticed in that storm is that all the while, the journey was smooth. They didn't need Jesus. Did you notice it? Jesus was in the same boat, sleeping, and they allowed him. You can sleep as long as you want because the journey was smooth. Everything was going according to plans. Their children are graduating, doing well in school. Business is doing well. The office is doing well. Health is very, very standard. There was no need for God. The first benefit of the storms of life is that the storms make you to need God. Are you following me? The storm makes you to seek God. As long as the boat was sailing peacefully, Jesus, you can stay there. It is when the business is going well, it is when the ship is moving well that people tell you they don't have time for God. I didn't see you in this program. I didn't see you in the service. I, say, well, I was busy. I don't have time. I have a friend. He used to be a multi-billionaire until the business crumbled. It crumbled to the extent that for him to come from Lagos to East, he doesn't have money for flight. You go and enter bus. It was so bad. So when he came to me, I was asking him, that time business was flourishing. That time you were doing well. That time you were a bastard billionaire. How close were you to God? And I asked him, that time do you go to church? He said, I used to go to bazaar. I used to go to bazaar which means he attends church once a year. Once a year. You know the reason? Because the movement was smooth. Immediately the storm came. Bawa! He could travel from Lagos and come to Newi and stay with me three days praying seeking God. Don't you see that this storm was good? Eh? He cannot seek God. He cannot pray. It was when the storm came that these people remembered that Jesus was in the boat. When the storm hit, they now began to look for Jesus. That was when they went to him and said, Master, Master, we are perishing. Because the storm 
has come. I don't want you to think that storm is all about something bad. There are kinds of storms. There are different types of storms. There is a normal storm of life. The truth is that troubles are part of life. There are normal storms of life. When a pregnant woman is complaining, this is happening, this is happening, people will tell her it is normal. So, there are things that are normal. There is a little quarrel that may come up in a family between husband and wife, and maybe when they meet somebody, maybe a pastor, a priest, to relate to you, will tell, ah, it is normal family quarrel. So, there are normal storms of life. That is number one type of storm. There is again the storms that comes because of our disobedience. There is also the storms of life that comes because of our disobedience. That was the kind of storm Jonah had. Jonah had that kind of storm. When God said to him, go to this place, the Bible says, and he went opposite direction. God said, go to Nineveh. He went to Tashis. On his way to Tashis, storms came. Why? He disobeyed God. So, you have to understand that disobedience attracts storms. Disobedience also attracts storms. There is also the storms of life that can come because you are obeying God. Just like the one we are looking at as our case study. The storm the disciples had was as a result of their obedience to the instruction of Jesus. Joseph also had this kind of storms. When, the, when Potiphar's wife said to Joseph, come and sleep with me. There is nobody in the house. Nobody will find out that we are sleeping together. Joseph said to her, I cannot do such evil against God. But to my greatest surprise, he stand to please God, landed him in the prison. So, this is another kind of storm that can come as a result of your obedience with God. But I've come to notice that if your storms of life is coming because you are obeying God, God cannot leave you. When I was in the theology school, I preached a sermon that caused trouble. I preached God went to prison. God, a prisoner. And everybody was saying, you are insulting God. I said, no. If it is an insult, I was not the one who said it. It was the Bible. Because the Bible says, why Joseph was in the prison, God was with him. We are in prison. So God, Joseph, have you seen the extent God can follow a man that is passing storm on account of obedience to him? Why Joseph was in prison, God was with him in the prison because somebody said, even if I see storm, I will still follow him. Then there is the last kind of storm, the storm people bring against others. That was the kind of storm Paul faced in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 27, because they were dragging him to, to Rome. And when he was telling them, there is storm, the weather is bad, let's not try. They pushed him inside the ship and they met storm. But I want to measure on the third one as I show you the benefits of storms of life. One, the storm makes us to have need for God. Most of us, if things will continue to be smooth, you may not seek God in your life. You may not have need for God. But when things go bad, you see people seeking God. You see big men, they come to God closer 
when there is storm. So number one, storm makes us to seek God. Number two, storms makes us to trust God the more. Number one is to seek him. Number two is to trust him. After the storm subsided, the disciples said, who is this man that even the wind and the sea obey him? Their level of trust in Jesus grew. Why? They have seen storms. You know, if God delivers you from a very terrible storm, you will trust God more. If you see somebody, I, I have widows fellowship in all sense Anglican church issue. Since that widows fellowship commenced, I have not even preached there. We started it on February. Since February, I've been bringing only widows, Christian widows, to talk to them. Because they have passed similar storms. They have passed similar storm of life. So, they have testimony. They can boldly tell them, trust this God. What you are passing through, I too pass through. But I can trust this God. When you come out of storms, you trust God the more. One widow was sharing her testimony. I was shivering. The day she came to minister in that widow's fellowship, she was telling them that her own, the husband was living abroad, arrangement to join the husband has been concluded. She was working with teaching hospital. She has resigned her job, withdrew her children from school. They are traveling in the next three days. Withdrew the school, children from school, gave out the apartment where they are living in the to join the husband next three days. Only for the news to come. The man you quit your job in teaching hospital to go and join. The man you will do your children from school to go and join. The man you gave out your flat to go and join is coming back to be buried. That, that must be a terrible storm. So, if somebody who had passed such storm can look at other widows and say to them, but I've learned to trust this God. I think it will make sense more than whatever sermon I will preach. Do you know why? Somebody who has passed the storm have come to trust God to a very higher dimension. So, the storms of life makes you to trust God. Do you know, if the disciples, you know, before before this, there was calmness, they have lost trust in Jesus. Did you notice how, how they went to wake him up? Master, master, do you not care that we are perishing? Which means they were doubting his care. They are in doubt if this man really loves us. You know, storms have made so many people to doubt God. That is why people ask God, Chineke Enozikuya. Why me? These are all expressions of doubt. But after the storm, their testimony changed. Who is this man that even the storm and the wind can obey him? That is a testimony of a very serious trust. So, storms helps us to trust God the more. Storms teach us how to pray. You know, storms teach us how to pray. Some people fasted for the first time when storm came. Before Galanya Sigin, before Jelin, me out of 7 a.m., Obugidon, no course, is in body. Because storm has come. So, storms of life is not bad all the way. There are benefits. Do you know it was the storms of life that made Mordecai vice president in another country? Herman was his storm. When Herman was not after him, there was calmness. Why should Esther fast? A whole queen. 
There was no need for Esther to fast. There was no need for Mordecai to fast. There was no need for the Jews to fast. Everything was going accordingly. Immediately, a storm came in form of Herman. Herman went to the king and said, there is a set of people in this, in this country. If you leave them, we are finished. He said, what do you want to do? Then? Let them be killed. So a date was set. The day every Jew will die. And the king removed his signet ring. In the law of mess and Pesha, anything sealed with the king's signet ring is irrevocable. You know the extent? The king took that signet ring, gave it to Herman, said, write anything you wish against the Jews, seal it with my seal. And he said a date, every Jew will die. Circulate the papers, the letter to every province, sealed with the king's signet ring. Ha! What a storm. And Mordecai went to the palace. They said, you can't come. You are wearing morning clothes. He said, nonsense. Storms makes you to be radical in the spirit. What do you mean I'm wearing morning clothes? He broke in. Call Queen Esther for me. Queen Esther gave him clothes. Please change first. So, say, I am not putting anything. You know what was pushing him all these things? Storms have come. So storms makes us to pray. Storms makes us to fast. And Esther said, okay, I cannot do this, I cannot do this. said, who knows if it is for a time like this. Because of the storm that God placed to them. And a whole queen said, let all the Jews fast. Myself if you are a queen then Azaros was controlling about 127 provinces not a small nation like Nigeria or America no 127 provinces and first lady of such nation was fasting storms so storms makes us to fast and it was that storm that made Mordecai vice president. He replaced Herman. So, there are benefits in storms. That's what my, my opening note. I wouldn't like you in the journey of this as we study this thing during this retreat. Don't just see storm as what is bad all around. No. It's not bad all around. And you know sometimes God sent storm. It was God that sent storm to Jonah. And God sent storm against them. So God also sent storms. Every storm is not from Satan. There was a man that was born blind in John chapter 9. They were asking Jesus, who sinned that this man was born blind? Why must he be born blind? Somebody must have sinned. And they said to Jesus, was it his father or his mother? Who sinned? And Jesus said, nobody sinned. That storm was for the glory of God. There's another benefit of storm. Storms of life gives God glory. In my feature, what you make or make you the more no, 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 no. But can somebody balloon no order? Three of us. Upon the moon, when you balloon no order, a ya what you make or make you the more no, no. So, storms of life, if you follow God, if you are steady, if you keep looking to Him. If storms of life, you will allow the storms to achieve the purpose. The purpose of the storm is to make you to recognize God. The purpose of the storm is to make you to pray. The purpose of the storm is to make you to trust God. If you will recognize it and follow God in your storm, it will end in God's glory. If you recognize, ah, this storm. You know, I told people that the easiest way you know the easiest way to commit suicide? Don't drink poison. If you want to commit suicide, abandon God in the midst of your storm. If you want to commit suicide faster, just abandon God when you face storm. I learned it from one woman in the Bible. 
I don't even know her name, but I know the name of her husband. Her husband's name was Job. When Job was facing his storms, the wife said to him, why are you still holding to your integrity? Why are you still holding on to this God? Cause God and die. So, if you want to die faster, what will you do? You cause God. But as long as you are holding this God, the storm cannot kill you. That was just the implication. Do you get what I'm saying? As long as you are holding on to this God, Job, I've noticed that as long as you are holding to your righteousness, this storm, though it's looking too bad, it still cannot kill you. Job's storm was terrible, but after everything, that woman was careful enough to observe that no matter the intensity of the storm, my husband cannot die. The only thing that can kill my husband is to curse God. The storm was so terrible that he was having boys all over his body. He cannot sit. He cannot stand. He cannot lie down. And we hang on the air. No feet to stand. No buttons to sit down. Nobody to lie down. Everywhere boys. When the woman looked at such pains, she was able to notice, though these pains are too severe, but they cannot kill this man. And she made the decision. Sir, I've seen what you're passing through. I have accepted to be a woman. Instead of looking at you suffering like this, let me be a woman. But I've done everything so that you will die. You didn't want to die. I've noticed that one thing is keeping you. i holding on to God. Please, curse God so that you if your heart will not curse God in the midst of your storms, if your heart will still hold on to God, if you will see beyond your storms and see God teaching you how to trust him, if you will see beyond the storms and see God teaching you prayers and fasting, if you will see beyond your storms and see God Teaching you how to depend on him. How to recognize him. Because they forgot Jesus. And they were selling their boat peacefully. Probably they were chatting, laughing. Jesus was sleeping. They allowed Jesus to sleep. When God said, you that seek the Lord, give him no rest. Give yourself no rest. That is the Bible. They gave him rest because everything was in order. If you will see all these things in the midst of your storm. And believe me, if you hold him, that storm will end in God's glory. Jesus said to them, this man did not sin. Neither does his parents sin. But this storm, this blindness was for the glory of God. When they said to him, your friend, the Lazarus, is sick. He said to them, that sickness, no matter how terrible, cannot lead to death. It can only lead to the glory of God. I want to announce to you. Whatever storms of life you're passing cannot lead to death. Probably that storm is because you have forgotten God. God is seeking your attention. Probably that storm is because you are taking the place of God. God is reminding you, oh God, you are still a human being. Because most times people talk like God. Sometimes money make people to talk like God. Sometimes positions make people to talk like God. Say, after dealing with you, you will know who I am. Oh God, you are still a human being. To God. Now I wish I would find that message and share it to some of you. That message says, He is God and you are not. No matter how worthy you are, no matter how placed you are in the society, you are still not God. Maybe God sent that storm to remind you, sir, you are still a human being. Stop talking like God. Say, I will destroy you. It is only God. The Bible says, 
It is God that makes. It is God that destroys. It is not in anybody's hand to make. Some people will say, no, I'm not making any money. Shut up. You don't make anybody. It is God that makes people. It is God. If he chose you as an instrument, you don't make the person. You are just an instrument. And remember, God always has backup because he knows people can mess up. If he wants to use as a channel to lift somebody, so, sometimes when God sees arrogance, when God sees self, that is believing in self so much, when God notices that you are abandoning him, he allows thorns to remind you, I am still in charge. Immediately they rush to Jesus. Sir, we are perishing. The Bible says he did two things. He rebuked the storms, face the sea, and said, See, peace, be still, calmness in the world. Because when God speaks, everything obeys. When God speaks, everything hears. Benefit in the storms. It's only for you to know what God is saying. And you are peace of the coming storm. Then that storm will end in the peace of the coming storm. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful to you. Thank you for teaching us that there are benefits in the midst of the storms of life. We honestly beg you this morning. May we never curse you according to the recommendations of the wife of Job. She recommended to the husband, if you can curse God, you will die. Job did not curse God and Job didn't die eventually. It ended in glory. The Bible says the latter part of Job was better than former after the storms. In the midst of our various storms, different storms of life, see you teaching us to trust you. May we see you teaching us that we are still human beings. That we should reduce our ego and arrogance. In the midst of our storm, may we see you teaching us to depend on you and stop depending on, on our money and our placement in the society. In the midst of our storm, may we see you teaching us that you need our attention. May every storm anybody has carried to this retreat end to your glory. In Jesus' precious name.